if you remember from part one, we'd fitted the trigger wheel and the sensor, we were on our way to getting the HT leads done, uh, so now we're going to go and finish the HT leads off, we'll fit the wiring loom and the O2 sensor, then we'll see if we can get it started. So, let's go. Right, so I've measured how long the lead needs to be, so I've made a little mark there. All I need to do is snip it. So if you remember from part one, we'd fitted the trigger wheel and the sensor, we were on our way to getting the HT leads done. Uh, so now we're going to go and finish the HT leads off, we'll fit the wiring loom and the O2 sensor, then we'll see if we can get it started. So, let's go. No, that's it. As we did with the other end, we're just going to trim the cover off. Ooh, that's a little bit tidier than the other one. Maybe I just need to lean on the bench. Right, now, before we go any further, like I said, don't forget, um, we need to put the we need to put the boot on before we put the uh, connector on the end, otherwise the boot won't fit. I'm going to have to take it all apart again. I really don't want to do that. Right, now this one, this end we are actually going to use my handy little crimping tool for. So what we're going to be doing with this end, like the other one, is we're going to be bending the conductor back and then crimping the crimping the end over it. So if you can see we've got like a an M shape. So what that's going to do is it's going to bend the crimps over as we squish it. Uh, but we need to kind of give it a bit of a head start. Let's get it a little bit on the way. So you can see I've just closed it down a little bit so when we put that end in there and then we put this over the top. Hang on a sec. Yeah, so you can see that as we compress it, the metal on the M shape is going to push those top bits around and crimp them onto the cable. So I'm going to need to do that over on my vice. Now you can see that's nicely crimped on there. That's not going to go anywhere. All we need to do now is slide the boot back down over the end and we've got one spark lead made up and ready to go on the car. So that's one down, seven to go. So the last job we need to do before we can try getting it started again is to fit the oxygen sensor. Now this is basically uh, to tell the engine computer whether it's running too rich or too lean so it can adjust the amount of fuel that it puts in accordingly. What we're going to need to do is weld this bung into the exhaust. So I've marked on the exhaust where I want the sensor to go and I'm just going to need to clean this up, drill a hole, put the bung in, weld it up um, and then I can fit the oxygen sensor. So, we've got all the hardware fitted now, so the trigger wheel and the sensor are somewhere down there. We've got the coil packs fitted onto a bracket over there, uh, which I don't know if you can tell, but probably needs taking off and painting. Um, we've got the throttle sensor hooked up, we've got a connection to the original temperature sensor and there's also an air temperature sensor somewhere around there. So those are the inputs. Um, in far, as far as outputs go, obviously there's one, two coil packs and then we've got the fuel injectors as well. Now the one that I did for my kit car came with um, a stub loom and a bunch of connectors but because I don't have the right crimping tools it was a bit of a pain with the running of the cables so I reached out to a guy called Sean at MS2 Tuning and I gave him a few measurements uh, which car it was going into and he built me a custom loom with uh, all the connectors on, uh, 
enough wire for everything and he's done a fantastic job so all I had to do was just basically plug everything in. Um, if you're going this way and you don't have all the specialist tools I'd highly recommend reaching out to Sean and um, getting him to build you a loo. So um, that's pretty much all the wiring done. Um, it was a really nice job, uh, nice and easy because Sean did most of the work for me. So. Um, the next thing to do is go and take a look at the software and see if we can get this thing started. So now all the hardware's plumbed in, we can start looking at software, see if we can get this thing started. So I've got my laptop hooked up to the Mega Squirt via a USB um, USB to serial dongle. You can pick these up easily on eBay. And the software that I'm using is called Tuna Studio MS. It's the recommended software to go with the Mega Squirt. Um, there's a free version, but there's also, if you pay for a little bit of money to actually upgrade to the registered version, you'll get a couple of um, extra features which allow you to automatically tune the car as it's running. So what we'll do is we'll look at the screen now, you can see it's offline. So if I turn the car on, you can hear the fuel pump running for a couple of seconds just to prime the fuel line. You can see the software's picked up. Um, it's telling me a number of things that look good, so the sensors are right. So we've got the battery voltage, we've got the coolant temperature, uh, which is one of the sensors. As you can see, it's pretty cold today. Um, the throttle sensor, so if I push down and on the throttle pedal, you can see the throttle sensor's working well. I've also got... where is it? Um, I've got a um, Bluetooth GPS unit. Um, this is the... Qstars 818XT, this one is the one that's recommended by these guys, and it will give you a 10 hertz, so 10 times a second GPS signal via Bluetooth back to the software so you can calculate miles per gallon and MPH, things like that. So, without further ado, let's see if this will start. And there we go. Um, you can see now on the screen we've got. Um, quite a high engine speed because obviously the car's still cold. You can see that the O2 sensor is actually picking up the AFR from the exhaust gases, so it's using that to decide how to tune the fuel load. Um, obviously there's no MPG because we're not moving yet. So now why don't we just go for, I'll do a little bit of a run just so you can see the dials moving around um, and then once the car's warmed up we'll come back I'll show you how the tune, the, the auto tuning works. Okay, so we've been for a bit of a drive. Car's warmed up now, so we can start looking at the tuning. So what we need to do is turn the car on and the software boots up. Then we can go to this tab tune analyze live and you'll see a bunch of numbers in the grid now what these are is the amount of fuel that's going to be put in based on up the left hand side is the amount of air that's coming in so basically how much throttle you're giving it and across the bottom is number of revs so it's to do with how hard you're accelerating at any given point on the rev range and so the software can somehow work out um, whether you're getting too much or not enough fuel at that particular point and then update the numbers accordingly what happens then is if this little box here, update controller, is checked, every couple of seconds it'll actually write the numbers into the computer so it'll be using the new numbers. And then once you're finished, you can hit save on ECU and that will actually burn the stuff to the computer. So uh, let's get the car started. And you can see the, um, the numbers jumping around so you can see how much air we've got coming in and uh, what revs the engine's at. Now if I hit start auto tune, then that will start correcting the table. And as I drive, you'll be able to see that um, some of these numbers are getting updated. Over here on the right hand side, you'll see the cells that are changing. Right now it's not doing anything because it's a minimum CLT or coolant temperature. Um, the minimum coolant temperature is uh, too low for it to be effective. So once we've driven around for a little bit, um, we'll be able to see some of those numbers changing.
So that's another job finished. We've replaced the old distributor ignition and Lucas fuel injection system with a fully tunable, fully electronic fuel injection and ignition system. It's not that complicated, it just takes a bit of patience, a few basic tools and of course some wiring skills. So um, that's why I outsourced that to Sean. So thanks again to Sean and MS2 Tuning. If anybody's thinking about doing this, uh, this upgrade themselves, I highly recommend go and talk to Sean. He can source the mega squirt unit, he can build the wiring loom for you and also he does uh, tuning services as well. If anybody's interested in a little bit, knowing a little bit more about the tuning side of it, then uh, leave me a message in the comments section and if we get enough interest I'll get in touch with Sean and see if he's interested in doing a guest spot. Um, that's all for now, please remember to subscribe. If you've already subscribed then thanks very much. Uh, join me again soon when I'll be doing something else interesting to my Land Rover and um, bye for now.